Okay. So um, before we start going through this, I do want you to understand that that we are not doctors, not physicians, not qualified. And if we and if you do have some medical questions, then the only people to ask are your primary care physicians or, um, you know, get them. If it's a friend of yours who you think might have Parkinson's symptoms, then get them to get an appointment with a neurologist. And generally, um, somebody who uh, specializes in Parkinson's is called a movement disorder specialist. But some um, organizations uh, just call them neurologists. So it just depends. Um, so although we are not um, medical practitioners, we do have quite a lot of experience of Parkinson's. And although I am the director of operations at this organization, I am also the care partner of um, a person with Parkinson's. My husband has it. So I, I have kind of a lot of day to day experience, if not necessarily medical experience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through, first of all, some of the symptoms that you might observe with people with Parkinson's so that you understand what the disease is. OK, and then we're going to talk about what the Parkinson Foundation of the National Capital Area does and how it would help people who have Parkinson's. And I hope that, that will, you will find that interesting. OK, so... Um, the kind of things that you normally expect to see when people with Parkinson's that you might have met or encountered is that they tend to have a shake somewhere, uh, very often in one of their hands or one of their legs to start with. And this is because they have a, a neurological condition which um, stops the cells in the part of their brain that makes dopamine uh, stops working as well as it ought to. And because dopamine is the thing which controls people's movement and coordination, if you don't have enough dopamine in the system, then you tend to get these issues of resting tremor or a slowness, which the proper name is bradykinesia, or a stiffness of the limbs. And very often people might move very slowly or they might, when they're walking, not swing their arms as they used to. You know, when you when you walk naturally, you tend to have your arms swinging. But somebody with Parkinson's might not have that. Um, you might not see it. And they generally, um, as it progresses as a disease, and it is a progressive disease because those cells in the brain which make the dopamine gradually reduce and reduce and reduce. And although the medicine that you can take for Parkinson's disease tries to replace the dopamine in your body, uh, it doesn't do a perfect job. And so, you know, as the disease progresses, uh, you can't produce as much dopamine as you need. OK, the other things that you might notice with people with Parkinson's is that their handwriting gets much, much smaller. You might notice that they don't express themselves so much in their face. You know, when I'm talking, I tend to wave my hands about. I've got them at the moment clamped down, so I'm not waving them about. But but I tend to wave my hands about and I tend to use a lot of smiling and a lot of eye movement as I'm talking to engage people. And you might see someone with Parkinson's whose face really doesn't. It's called a Parkinson's mask. Uh, and it doesn't mean they're not expressing themselves. It's just that they can't because the muscles of their face aren't working quite so well. As the disease progresses, a lot of people's speech gets softer and they might have difficulty in swallowing. As it goes on, they might, one of the big issues with Parkinson's, as it is with everybody getting older, like myself, all right, is that you tend to have more issues with balance, but that is absolutely exacerbated in somebody with Parkinson's. And a lot of the problems later on in the disease are that people with Parkinson's tend to fall. Uh, and falling is uh, something which then might lead to much more serious conditions in the future. Other things that you might see, apart from the resting tremor, the balance issues, the small handwriting, the decreased the decreased facial expression, the shuffling of the gait, the voice getting softer is one of the things that I experience in my life is sleep disturbance. Um, when we are asleep and dreaming, normally um, the dopamine receptors in the brain, etc., paralyze you so that you don't move when you're dreaming. So you might be thinking that you're having a very active dream, but you won't actually be doing much. But for people with Parkinson's, they actually can still move and act out their dream. And so you do tend to get quite a lot of movement and during dream sleep. Constipation can be an issue. 
depression and sometimes dementia can go with it. But that there's an old adage about Parkinson's, which is if you've seen one person with Parkinson's, you've seen one person with Parkinson's because not every person with Parkinson's is going to have every single one of the symptoms. They might have this one and that one, but never go on to develop another one. So it is it is very much an individual disease uh, where you have individual symptoms. And so although it's commonly accepted that the motor symptoms might come first. They, they really might not in some people. So if you have any concerns about any of the issues which you think might be related to Parkinson's disease, then the only thing you can ever do, as we said right at the beginning, is go and see a, your primary care physician and get a referral to a neurologist, movement disorder specialist to see if indeed that is something that, that you have. Um, there are some tests that people can do for Parkinson's, but um, it's usually a DAT scan of the brain to see if the uh, area of the brain is working properly. But this is not an absolutely fail safe uh, diagnosis. Um, and a lot of the time, what a physician might do is is try the um the, the dopamine medicine, which is called generally carbidopa, levodopa, uh, which um, you are prescribed when you have Parkinson's uh, once you get to needing dip dopamine replacement, um, then they see if it actually works. And if it does work, it means that it's more or less um, a certain diagnosis that you have Parkinson's. But that's, you know, that's certainly how my husband was diagnosed. Try the drugs. Does it work? OK, you've got Parkinson's. OK. That's a very brief snapshot of the medical issues around uh, around and about of the Parkinson's disease. And you might think, well, it's a progressive disease and people with Parkinson's are going to get worse. There's no doubt as they as they move through the disease. Um, but you tend again, there's all, all these old adages about Parkinson's disease. Um, so they say that you don't die of Parkinson's, you die with Parkinson's. So there are, you know, Parkinson's disease, although it gets worse and worse, is not something that is, um, if you get a diagnosis of it, that is, you know, a fatal disease, like, say, for example, a cancer, you might feel very much that that's kind of something which might lead to a fatality, whereas Parkinson's disease does not lead to that, it just leads to some kind of um, disability that you might see increasing as you get as you go through the disease. So our foundation is a, a foundation that um, offers support to those people with Parkinson's and also their caregivers uh, to, to actually help them live as well as they possibly can with the condition. So we provide direct services to help people fight Parkinson's. We've been going for more than 25 years. It was started um, in Washington um, all that time ago uh, with a group of people who were um, interested and some of them were um, you know, suffering from Parkinson's and started this, this organization using evidence-based work to support people with Parkinson's because the although the medicine can help, the one thing that can really help people with Parkinson's is that they exercise their body, their mind, and their voice to keep their voices as strong as possible, to keep their minds working so that they don't get depressed, that they still socialize, they still enjoy life, and exercising their body to try and overcome all these um, motor issues which might cause them to be stiffer or move less well or have balance issues. So that is what we're providing. We're providing those direct services. Some of them are in person around Washington, D.C., in Maryland and in Virginia, near Washington, D.C., but also now because of the pandemic three years ago in, in a kind of benefit way, amazingly, we pivoted straight away onto Zoom. And so there are almost 40 classes a week live on Zoom. So, so people can join from wherever, which has meant that we've got a lot of people who don't necessarily live in DC, Maryland and Virginia anymore, but who do live anywhere in the US. We've got people from Oregon, from California, from New Hampshire, from Maine, all over the USA are joining us in our Zoom classes. Okay, so we have two main sorts of activities that do this. The first one is then the wellness programs. These are the ones that help people exercise their mind, body, and voice. 
And then we also have educational activities. We run a quarterly uh, lecture series called Parkinson Pointers, uh, which people can go to. And we also have an annual symposium where people can go and find out much more about Parkinson's from the experts. And I will, we'll get to it in a minute of who we are supported by in that, in that physician field. But it is really um, in, important to recognize that we live in a very fortunate area regarding Parkinson's disease. There are an awful lot of institutions with fantastic expertise, uh, people that are really well qualified to support people with Parkinson's in this area. And they support us in our organization, which is really fantastic. So we reckon that we did over 2000 classes, wellness classes, which were exercising our body, mind and voice. I mean, they provide them seven days a week, 365 days a year. We don't run a full program on on holidays like, uh, you know, Thanksgiving coming up later this month. We'll just do one class on that Thanksgiving. But every day we will try to run something for people who want to get their body and their mind moving as much as possible so that they can really uh, fight back against this disease, which will rob them otherwise of, of their ability to move and coordinate. So I think the next slide, I've got some people doing some classes. There's people doing some boxing here. Boxing is very, very popular. Everybody loves going to boxing. That's on the right-hand side of the screen. On the left-hand side of the screen, this is one of our communication clubs where people are exercising their voices and their minds, talking and communicating with one another in person around the DMV. Okay, I'm just gonna drop out of my uh, PowerPoint, I hope, if I can. Um, uh, if only I knew how to do that, it'd be marvellous. Okay, I think it probably is escape. Yeah, marvelous. Yeah, there's the escape button. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay, I'm going to go to the actual website now, which the slide showed you a picture of it. Okay, so this is our main website, pfnca.org, parkinsonfoundation.org. Okay, and our wellness program here in this bright orange box if you are somebody that you think might have Parkinson's or you know somebody that might have Parkinson's. Jan, and Jan, we're, still seeing, Jan, we're still seeing the slide deck, just to let you know. Are you? Yeah, oh. yeah you're not on the website. I thought you were going to go on the website in a second. <laughs> I was, yeah. I did. I, I did um, that's interesting. Maybe, maybe, I, stop, I, maybe, stop, I maybe stop sharing. I dropped the slide deck, so I don't know how that happened. Maybe stop sharing and start sharing the new, the new window, maybe. Okay, maybe. Okay, new share. How's that? Yes. That worked. Um, no, we still see your PowerPoint. So I would, uh, I would stop sharing my screen. There you go. Parkinsonfoundation.org. Yeah, okay, got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the this is the website. So I was on the same slide, so you probably saw the same thing, but I wanted it to be here live. Is that okay now? You've got it. Okay. So there's a lot of resources on here about Parkinson's, and if you want to join us and join the wellness classes. The important thing to recognize is, is that it is just $50 a year to register. And then all of the actual classes are free to participate in, whether they are in person or whether they are online. OK, to register, you would have to click here. But I'm just going to show you what the live class schedule is, I hope. All right. It's password protected and you get the password if you are registered. OK. And then this is our main schedule page, just to see, show you the kinds of classes that we have. So today's Tuesday. I think it's still Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? Okay, so you would click on the day and then it shows you the full range of classes that we have. So we have, you know, exercise at 10, Zumba at 11. Very popular now, I think Zumba. Just different kinds of ways of getting people engaged. Boxing at 12.30. Communication Club, which is the one that really gets you to exercise your voice and keep your voice strong and also uh, helps you with your swallowing as well. OK, exercise at three, chair yoga at 430 and dance at six. So, you know, you've got, I hope, something that everybody would find something there that they would like to do. Some of our people <laughs> do one, two, three classes a day on some days, not every day, perhaps, but on some days. And, um, you know, 
that doesn't matter how many classes you do, whether you just do one a day or if you do more than that because you want to, that's absolutely great. But what you, you know, you, you don't have to pay anything extra to do any of these classes. You've paid your registration and then all of the classes are free to participate in. Even we have a couple of classes on Saturdays and a few classes on Sundays. So it really is a seven days a week um, uh, opportunity to exercise in all ways. Okay, let me go back and go to the PowerPoint again. I hope. Okay, and play from the current slide. Am I back to my slide? Okay, is that okay? Everybody yes, happy with yeah. that? Marvelous. Yes, you're good to go. Goodness, I'm getting better at this, Craig. <laughs> This is my first time of swipping about between things. There you go. All right. Then we're just going to go a bit more detail into our educational activities. So say we have this annual symposium. Usually it's in April. Uh, and uh, we have always used to do it before the pandemic in um, several venues, one in Maryland, one in Virginia, and some, one of them actually in Delaware. So, you know, there were three venues and we'd have presenters at different venues and then they would be able to be um, streamed to other places. But since the pandemic, we pivoted straight away in 2020 to doing this online. And this year we did go back in person just at the one place in Falls Church in Virginia. But um, we also offered it so that everybody could watch the recordings and have a full um, online experience from the Tuesday after the live day. So that about 25 hours of presentations from very, very uh, esteemed experts in Parkinson's disease spoke about a huge range of topics of interest to people with Parkinson's. And then, as I said earlier, we have a quarterly Parkinson's Pointers lecture series, completely free to attend at a variety of centres around the DMV. Mostly we uh, use uh, retirement communities uh, and they host, host the event and people can go and get refreshments, meet one another, can, you know, have a bit of socialisation, uh, as well as listen to the lecture and usually after the end of the lecture we take questions through uh, the chat box like we're going to do today I think. Okay there we go now this is the most one of the most important things as I said we are so so lucky in this area that we have so many of these esteemed doctors from the National Institutes of Health, from the Movement Disorders Centre of Maryland, the Neurology Centre at Fairfax, George Washington University, all these people give of their time for free to be members of our medical advisory board. They make sure that what we do is, uh, and what is on our website is uh, as accurate as it could be and as up to date as it can be, because of course, as always, medical things are changing from, from you know year to year, from uh, decade to decade improvements are made. So we have a huge range of, of people from all these different institutions who support us and who produce the uh, the, the medical uh, content of our educational activities. So a, a group of them will produce the symposium lectures and they would record them, make them available, as well as having some live presentations. I said this year for the first time again after the pandemic and the Parkinson pointers, this one we just did, um, uh, two weeks ago, uh, and it was Dr. Preeta Ghosh there, our chair of the medical advisory board that went through what people should be doing if they have Parkinson's to prepare for, for, for life as it goes on. So that you are you know, well prepared for the future as it goes on. We call it a Parkinson's scorecard. But we are incredibly lucky, as I said, in this area that we have to so many real experts to draw on from all over the area and that, that they are so um, generous to give of their time and expertise to us for free. Now, as I said, we are a completely independent organization. There are actually, I think our, our chair always says over 200, I think it is, organizations in the USA with Parkinson's and foundation as part of their title but we aren't affiliated with any of them. We are completely independent. And as I said, we're only uh, uh, asking people to register for our wellness programs with a cost of $50, which is 
really just to support the administration of our Zoom platform and to make sure that everybody who participates in our wellness programs is covered by insurance. Now, this does mean that it's really important for us to raise money. And we have an annual signature event, which is a fundraiser as well, but also a great community event. You'll see down in the right hand picture here. This is a lot of members of our medical advisory board incognito wearing baseball shirts, having had a little softball game. Uh, at the, at the, we had it at Shirley Povich Field for the last few years, um, it, it, which is in Cabin John Park in Maryland, but nice and easily accessible to everybody. Um, but, you know, we, they are very much um, supporting us on this day, even though it's not, not an educational activity. There are still some lectures and things available for people during the day. But generally, if it wasn't raining quite so much, we would have much more fun doing carnival games, which we did a great deal of the first time we had it. And it was great good weather. And then we've been very, very unlucky with weather the last couple of years. And it has been raining. But we still managed to have a great deal of fun managing to keep ourselves mostly dry undercover and having some fun but it it uh, it did, did dampen it a little bit but it's a really important annual event that we have for so many reasons to say the community of people really getting together and seeing one another which has been great and because it's outside we could do it even though there were still some pandemic restrictions the last couple of years but uh, uh, also just just to raise as much money and as much awareness from the community as possible in order to support the programs. I didn't mention when I talked about the registration um, fee that of course, if anybody has any reason to be concerned about $50, you know, if that's if that's you know something which is prohibitive for them, we are very lucky that we have got some very generous donors who have given us a scholarship fund. So it means we can offer that registration for free. You only have to ask. <laughs> Amp was in the previous pictures there, starring at the annual Walk Off Parkinson's event. But here he is um, doing um, an, an event of, of a more community based. This is a, we go to some of the big parades uh, in around the DMV. I'm not sure which one is with the sunshine. Mm, I don't think it's probably July the 4th. It, it might be the one at Thanksgiving. Jared, I don't know if you can remember which one that is, but we do Thanksgiving parades. Yeah, that, that, that is a Labor Day parade. In Kensington. David, uh, okay, is. Ken, uh, Kensington. Okay, so we, we tend to go to, to all the parades that we can do. We take our mascot, Amp. Um, he's very attractive to everybody. You can see lots of the young people want to see him and greet him. And it's just all about awareness raising that there is support and there is help and it is local. And that's, I think, really vital. Uh, and Amp, as you can see, um, <laughs> has has a baseball uniform on. Um, and it's a great deal of fun. He goes alongside our mobile resource unit, which is a, an old uh, fire command vehicle. I think it's 1988, was it, Jan, something like that? But it's been repurposed and That's it's been great. made, made uh, uh, obviously, with lots of decals and things showing that it is to do with Parkinson's disease and that we are trying to make sure that we defy Parkinson's and that our whole community enables people to live absolutely as well as possible with Parkinson's. Uh, and, you know, with our Ampmobile, as we call it, and with AMP, doing all the community parades is a really great way of making sure that everybody in the community knows that we exist. And if they or their family members get a diagnosis of Parkinson's, they know where to turn and who can help them. Now, what are people saying about us? Well, you know, I think, you know, there's this one here, I think is a, is a caregiver. I like the variety and I like the enthusiasm. And we have a fantastic set of instructors, which we are always adding to, but making sure that they are people who are committed to really supporting and helping people and their care who have Parkinson's and their care partners. It's good to do exercises with a group. This is in-person ones. It helps my husband to get out with others who have Parkinson's. And I think that's something that really helps. This is more about our Zoom classes. 
I greatly enjoy PFNCA's classes. Not only am I receiving the benefit of great exercise opportunities from dedicated instructors, but I've also developed a tremendous sense of community with others who participate. Being diagnosed with a chronic disease like Parkinson's can be overwhelming. These classes give you tools right away to live well with the disease. And I, and I think that, that sort of summarizes what I really hope all of our participants feel about working with us is that what we're trying to do is say, yep, okay, you've got Parkinson's, but don't give up. It's not a life sentence in terms of, you know, that it's going to, you know, finish you off straight away. You've got to overcome it and really work yourself, but with your community to live absolutely as well as possible with the disease. Enjoy your life. That's the most important thing we can all do. PFNCA has had a few accolades. We are and have been for several years named one of the best small nonprofits in the greater Washington region. We got a, an honourable mention for excellence in nonprofit, and there is Jared looking a few years younger, I think, than he is now <laughs> in 2018. We've also had an impact award in 2019 as a global innovation award. And then we actually achieved the top award, an excellence award by Cvent, which is a software company for managing events for how we had used their software to make our programs work as well as possible which was really fantastic. Um, if you want to stay in touch with us, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we can also find us at the web at www.pfnca.org or email us at pfnca at parkinsonfoundation.org. That is the presentation. I am happy to take any questions. Is there some questions in the chat? Oh, hi, Jan. You did such an excellent job. I was really uh, immersed in your presentation. So thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> um, uh, no got, hands up yet. I a question there on the chat. It says, do we have any statistics by race and ethnic groups? Um, I don't think that there is any certain demographics more inclined um, to get Parkinson's. Um, we, we do have several um, members who are uh, people with Parkinson's uh, of colour, but uh, and obviously Preeta uh, does is a person of colour on our medical advisory board. We have in our um, governing body we have several members who are of colour. All right, and and it isn't any kind of. I mean, everybody. We have people of Asian origin that have Parkinson's. We have people of Caucasian origins, uh, of of Hispanic origins, as well as those of colour. So I mean, it is. It really. It, it's it's very even handed. Parkinson's. Everybody can get it. Oh wow! I I didn't. I think someone sent that to you directly, uh, Jan. Um, I see we have two hands up. Okay. Um, Miss Ann, go ahead and unmute. And don't forget, we've taken a poll at the end. So make sure you guys stay on for the poll. Thank you so much. Go ahead, Ann. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for bringing this information. I have a relative that was recently uh, diagnosed with this, and I will be able to pass this information on um, to you. I found your um, presentation very informative and very re refreshing to know that there's something out there that can help people so god bless you and thank you thank you very much that's really lovely to hear dan are you able to end your um to to uh, stop sharing so we can see everybody oh we i mean she's uh um jan is spotlighted um mr okay. jared i i think okay. it would be nice for the um the slide with the info to be on so you got it. That's, that sounds that, good that's that sounds information good. Okay. thank you Alexander. <laughs> No problem. Um, next up is Louise. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Jared. You had something to say? Well, I was just going to mention, you know, following up on the last comment, that we're really hoping that if all of you, you, you know, you may have a diagnosis, but you may know someone that has some of those symptoms, or you may know someone that has been diagnosed. And so we're really hoping that you could just take a mental note of our information that we're, that we're out there working every day to help people, and that you would consider referring folks to us. 
Oh, thank you so much for that, Mr. Jared. Yep, since everyone is on an iPad, they can also screenshot this slide that they see on the screen as well, so they can also record that information. So make sure you, uh, all of you are able to do that. Um, next up is Miss Louise. Hi, Louise, how's it going? Okay, I just wanna say in um, uh, 2019, I was diagnosed with uh, uh, Parkinson's and I was really, getting discouraged because <laughs> I I didn't want my mom to know because she was 102 oh. and she didn't have Parkinson's and she was up and getting out of bed and I was having difficulty. I know I fell off my bed a couple of nights like I was dreaming mm. or something. Yeah. I, broke, I broke the nightstand because the drawer was halfway open and everybody in the house laughing at me. You dreaming and falling again? And I didn't understand what was going on until I was riding down to 50 East. And then my left arm started shaking. And I thought, mm. maybe I'm anxious because it's too much traffic, you know. But then it keep coming back again. So I end up with terrible constipation. I, I want to walk because I used to walk the entire neighborhood real fast. Now I'm crawling like a turtle. And I, you know, my family didn't understand because I'm the one they used to come to. And every time somebody's at the metro, I jump in the car and run. Now mm -hmm. I'm like afraid to even back out of my driveway sometime because if I get a little anxious, you know, there's cars on the right, cars on the left, one behind me and so forth. I don't even like to go to the grocery store alone anymore. Mm. I asked my brothers, or I have two brothers. I always, yesterday, one took me to the store. And I got the courage to go to Cocoa Beach last week with a friend. I first thought I was going to slow her down, but she said, oh, forget that. We had a good time. I got in the water, put some salt water on me and everything. Good. And so I do the exercises with Model City. I just finished. They have a couple. And I still try to keep up with the iPad classes. So I, I, my speech gets slow. I love to sing, but now, you know, sometimes it gets kind of squeaky. Well, you keep singing because, again, singing is another really good thing. It not only exercises yeah. the vocal cords, but it mm -hmm. also keeps this going up here because <laughs> you mm -hmm. have to keep in tune with everybody else. And, and yeah. a lot of our people really like to sing and find that it's really good for them. We, mm -hmm. we have had in the past a choir class that once a week. Uh, at the mm -hmm. moment, we haven't got an instructor that will lead choir, but uh, we always mm -hmm. on the lookout for people who want to sing because it's really yeah. good for you. But mm -hmm. I hope, Louise, that you would think of joining us and, and, make, and, and using some of our classes and at least you know we're here now and that we mm -hmm. can support you. You know, and it, it is, it can be, I think, I think your point about getting the diagnosis. I mean, it, in my husband's case, getting the diagnosis was kind of a relief, you know, which mm -hmm. sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? But, you know, if you have had some symptoms and you don't know what it is, actually putting a name to it and knowing that there are treatments and that there are options of you know joining an organization like ours and making sure that you um, have the support that you need from your family and your friends and also mm -hmm. from the community is so incredibly vital but it can yeah. also be incredibly dispiriting to get it if you don't understand much about the disease which is right. why there's so many educational activities as well because mm -hmm. The more you know about the disease, the more you kind of are prepared for how you're going to face everything that might come your way. And, yeah. and balance is a really important issue. And you sound like you've had some balance issues recently. So, you know, mm -hmm. have you got yourself a walker to help you along? I started with a walker, then I went to a cane and now I don't use either. Oh, I, look at you, because you've been exercising. You've got to the point where yeah, you don't need it again. Good I for you. Well done. Anything. You are yeah. you are somebody that's absolutely expressing what I said. The more exercise you do, the better yeah. off you are. And enjoying and, life by going off to the beach is a great yeah. advert for somebody with Yes, problems. it was good. The medication yes. can be challenging, too. They yeah. tried three medications, and none of them work. I itch, oh, I no. sweat. 
all kind of things, but I have one now that works. And so I'm grateful. Do you have a bed rail, Louise? <laughs> no, and I put a stool in front to climb on my bed. <laughs> okay, I just was, you know, a, be a bed rail can give you a lot of security because, again, you know, my husband, as I said earlier, is some one of these active dreamers like you sound like you are. And, um, you know, falling out of bed, you can really hurt yourself. I mean, we put cushions on the floor for him. But, you know, um, you know, getting a bed rail is another thing you might think about, uh, you know, to yeah. try and falling out of bed. L Louis, Louis. <laughs> Louise, you've mentioned driving and we have a lot of resources about Parkinson's and driving because you want to make sure that you feel that you feel comfortable and, you feel, and you're safe when you're driving with Parkinson's. And so yeah. we have a number of lectures that we have available that discuss that specific topic. And essentially, you know, ultimately, it's a decision between you and your physician as to how you progress with driving. But, um, you know, we, we can also be a resource to you for that as well. OK, if I feel a little shaky, I don't do it. And yeah. I only do it if I don't have any grocery and there's no brothers available or sister. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yesterday, my brother took me and um, they usually ask if you need to go to the grocery store. Every once in a while, I'll sneak to the bank if I feel strong. You can tell if you're a little on the shaky or nervous side, yeah. then you just wait for another day. That might be better. Absolutely. Yeah. You sound very sensible, Louise. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you so much for sharing that, Louise. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. You're welcome. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't forget to lower your hand. Thank you. Um, we have Miss Catalina next, and then uh, Miss Shirley afterwards. Yes. Um. Hi. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for this. I um, I'm in the process of trying to, to determine whether I have Parkinson's. My voice has gotten low. My handwriting has gotten very small. But um, I've had MRIs done. I'm seeing a, um, a neurologist now. And um, she says that I have some traits of it. Um, I, my gait is what is the worst part. Um, I have scoliosis. So that makes it worse. Yeah. Also, I have osteoporosis. Okay, so but, um, falling over, you need to be very, very careful that you don't fall. So I hope you are getting some, um, you know, getting a, a cane or a walker to help make sure. That yes, you make I have a walker. Practice. Yeah. I have a walker. Good. But um, I'm supposed to take some kind of physical therapy. And... Yeah. um. I was wondering, um, the exercise classes, some of those, maybe something sitting down aerobics that yeah, should help. Yeah, some chair yoga and, and some, uh, nearly all of our instructors will moderate the exercises they do for sitting down. And some of them do the classes entirely seated anyway themselves. And they, I can tell you, they're still pretty rigorous and they really get your heart going, which is the important thing. You need to really, I mean, my, my um my husband was his consultant the words were that ring in my ears is that he had to get breathless every day you need mm. to get your cells in your brain making as much dopamine for yourself as you possibly can and that yeah. is the best way of doing that is by exercise which is you know you know being brisk you know, you can't walk briskly because that's too dangerous, but you can sit in a chair and really get your heart pumping. And that's a really important thing to do. So I think seated exercise programs for yourself, Catalina, would be really useful. Okay. And the doctor put me on uh, that carbidopa. Um, Lebidopa, yeah. But it's not helping anything. Yeah. So I go I mean, back to her. Getting the dose right, and um, you know the the some of the side effects of it can be very tricky. So you know you just need to keep going back to the doctor until they get it right, and keep the um, one of the things that um, Dr. Ghosh was talking about when she spoke at our recent Parkinson pointers is that you do have to keep a log for yourself almost about um, what you're experiencing day by day, time of day, so that you can tell your neurologist. Um, because you have to advocate for yourself 
you know, if they can only work in the dark if you don't give them the information. So, you know, get a little notebook, jot down the time of day when certain symptoms manifest themselves particularly so that you can go next time to the neurologist with as much information as possible about what you're experiencing so that they know how to help you. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing. Oh, thank Yes, thank you for sharing, Miss Catalina, and others as well. I know it may not be the easiest thing to talk about, so we appreciate you sharing your experience and probably help someone else on the call too. So thank you so much for that. Um, next up is Miss Shirley, and then uh, again, please raise your hand if you have a question for Miss Jan. Okay, go ahead, yeah. Shirley. Okay, hello, hello, Miss Jan. How you doing? I'm Hi, good. Thank I you. just have a question. Is the Parkinson disease the same disease that Michael J. Fox, the actor, had? It absolutely is, yes. He had early onset Parkinson's disease. Mo mm -hmm. For most people, Parkinson's disease is a disease as, as we age and get older. But okay. there is also um, a sort of strain of it, if you like, which is early onset Parkinson's disease. And he was in, I think, his late 20s when he was diagnosed, which is yeah. you know, unbelievable. But, I mean, he's... He's still going lots of years later. So you can see that it isn't something which is going to kill you off. You just have to okay. keep battling against it and doing the very best you can to work against it. No, you're absolutely right. Um, okay. He says that he probably doesn't think he's going to make 80 years old. But, um, you know, he's but he's doing a good job so far. And yeah. um, for him, he was saying recently that one of the big issues he has is falls, which I was talking to you yeah. about. Uh -huh. He's broken a lot of bones of his yes. body because falling Ooh. as the disease progresses is something that tends to happen quite a lot. Yes, I was just, you know, wondering about the symptoms that you had had on 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 the flow chart. Yeah, that uh -huh, that he had. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank You're very welcome, Miss Shirley. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Ms. Shirley. Uh, don't forget to lower your hand. Um, any other questions um, for Ms. Jan for today about, thinking about Parkinson's, the organization, anything that went over in the slides? Anybody else have a question? Please raise your hand. Um, thank you, Ms. Wilmotine. Go ahead and unmute. Got to hit unmute in the middle, Ms. Wilmotine. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I don't know if this part of the Parkinson, but yesterday I had a strange thing happen to me. I was in my reclining chair and had taken a uh, was you know taken a nap. So when my brother came in, he asked me some questions. He said, "Well, do you want a tea?" And I said, "Yes." And he said, do you want some salad? And I said, yes, but I was shaking my head real. I was just shaking my head. I could not stop my head from shaking. And I, I could not, it seemed like I was in a, like I was asleep or something. Mm. I'm asking, is that one symptoms of Parkinson where you want to wake up and you can't wake up and you're trying to wake up? So he, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna describe it as brain fog, Wilma. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. brain fog? Maybe. Uh huh. I mean, it's possible. So, I mean, I, I can I reiterate, I am not medically qualified, so I'm not right. going to diagnose you. But what I'm saying is that brain fog can certainly be something which is a symptom of Parkinson's. You know, and, and the, if you're in any doubt and you only got, got concerns about your yourself, you do need to go and see, first of all, your primary care physician and just get them to check you over because there are lots okay. of other things that could also cause brain fog. It's not Parkinson's disease is not the only one. So you really need to go and see your primary care physician, first of all. Okay. Just, well, just get yourself checked over because it could be... Uh -huh. I mean, they could, I'm not going to say it, but it could be lots of other things as well. And I'm not going to diagnose you today because I'm not a doctor. And, and right. a doctor can exactly. do it over the screen either. They will need right. to do some little tests and check you out. There are some tests they can do to see if it is the beginnings of Parkinson's disease. Right. So, 
Uh -huh. I do have a neurologist and uh, I think my appointment is next month, next week sometime. Oh, great. So okay. I'm going to, okay. I'm going to bring that up to him. Absolutely. Uh, Jot it down so that you don't forget to raise it when you see them next week. Okay. I would okay. Always before you go to see a doctor, that especially a neurologist, because you know their time is precious. Write down before you go anything that you've noticed that you're concerned about, so that you mm. can tell them. As I said earlier, you know, neurologists aren't magicians; they can't read your mind. They don't know what's been going on when they didn't see you. You right. need to advocate for yourself and tell them what's been going on, so that they can help you the best possible. Okay. Okay, will do. Thank you okay. very much for answering. You're very my welcome. Questions. Nice to talk to you, Miss Wilmerting. Mm -hmm. ah. Yes, thank you for sharing. Um, next up is Miss Loretta, and then we have Miss uh, Dina White next. Good afternoon. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I had a friend who was diagnosed with Parkinson's, and her family put her in a nursing home, right. and she was not treated very well. Now, does your organization have partnerships with nursing homes or would the family have to have some kind of um, um, partnership with you for her to get services through your organization? Because her, her experience was very, very, very bad. Okay, so we don't, we wouldn't, we wouldn't intervene on a personal level with any one person. So we offer direct services, but to groups of people. But okay. we do have partnerships with several um, retirement communities around the DMV uh, and all of those that work with us. So I think when I showed you, for example, the uh, schedule page, you saw that some of our classes are sponsored by some of these nursing homes. Like, I mean, one of them on a Tuesday morning is sponsored, for example, by the Seneca in Rockville. That's just okay. one example. OK, so you would know that um, from the fact that they are um, sponsoring classes for us, that they are an organization that is committed to uh, helping people with Parkinson's, okay? So I'm not gonna say that we're recommending anybody. And the part of that is of course, is that everybody is different and what's gonna suit them is different. But you at least can have a bit of a clue about the organization uh, and its um, ethos, if you like, if you know that it's really interested in people with Parkinson's because it's sponsoring classes. So, you know, we do have several um, partnership that, that where people are are supporting us and they they would be good places uh, for someone like, like say your sister. No, it was a friend of mine, a friend, a friend of yours. Yes. OK, oh, yeah. so, so that thank would you be very much for that. Thank you. Jan, Jan, can I add one one uh, additional observation for that as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, I agree. Jan, I agree with everything you said. It was beautifully stated. I also think that you know we only we only collaborate with about ten senior living communities in the area, but there are hundreds. And I think the main tenets of when when considering a senior living community, if you have Parkinson's, is to ask all the questions that you can up front. So ask them about their experience with residents with Parkinson's, ask them about ex their experience with patients, um, with residents who um, who um, essentially, you know, need their medicine on a very specific timing schedule. Because that's, that's a major thing that we hear is that, um, you know, the people in senior living, they're, they're, when they're given their medication, they're given to them at the wrong times. And so what experience does a senior living community have, not only with working with residents with Parkinson's, but being able to deliver on giving to medications exactly in the time windows when they're needed. So those are the kind of questions that we can help you develop. Other, other questions as well, if you reach out to us. Um, but that, those are things to think about no matter what community you talk to for your friend, not just the ones that are on our website. Oh, thank, well, I hope that uh, helped out for uh, Miss Loretta. I think she had muted herself, but I'm sure she heard that information. So thank you so much. Um, next up is Miss Dina for our questions. Hi, I appreciate your presentation. Thank you. There, this is the time for the Medicare season, and there are so many parts A, B, C, D, F. X, Y, Z. I'd like to know if the Medicare take care of the PD. 
And if not, in the near future, do you think Medicare will cover it? I'm sorry, I'm not an expert on Medicare. Um, I I do believe that you have to, you'll you'll have to get um, some of the additional Medicare um, support. I think it's Part C in order to get the drugs covered. Um, but um, uh, I think in terms of the neurologists, I believe that that you know as long as you are prescribed to go to a neurologist, that that will be supported. Do you know any more detail about Jared? I really don't. I really don't. I'm not even sure why I refer to even learn more, but it's it's an, it's an area we don't really focus on since we're more direct service. Um, I would suggest that you um, talk to the Department of Aging or for Aging in the in DT so that you get um, some information on that. Or the other thing to do is to um, ring or to look at Medicare.gov so that you can get the up to date information specifically about support for Parkinson's disease. And then additionally, the person's uh, physician's office may be able to answer questions as well mm -hmm. about that. But their, their office would be submitting claims all day long so they would know what would be the most advantageous form of Medicare to have oh. from their perspective. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry we're not experts on Medicare. I, it's, a, it's another sort of minefield of, of expertise that we don't really have, I'm afraid. Well, it sounds like to me it falls more under neurology. So yeah. Kaiser has neurology cl uh, clinics. Yeah, I mean I'm with Kaiser, so I will. I'm I know <laughs> that they're okay with Kaiser, but I wasn't going to suggest that 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 it was uh, that it was something that might be universal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. Thank you, Miss Dina. We have uh, Louise again. I just want to say that I have Kaiser also. And I've been covered since I've never had a problem. Uh, when the medications didn't work, I go back. I said, I'm itching, I'm swelling, it don't work. Give me another one. This is my fourth one, but the fourth one been working for a while. And I'm so glad it's working for you, Miss Louise. That's all that matters. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's covered, you know, whatever they have is covered with Kaiser also. The, the challenges sometimes are difficult. They're like getting dressed and trying to go to church and someone is going to pick you up and you have to make it on time and you cannot do the zipper and you cannot do the buttons mm -hmm. and, and the clothes is not big enough because you gain some weight. That's a, one, of the, one of the suggestions in terms of, of, of uh, physical therapy that they have to think about is sometimes you get anxious and, you, and your movements are smaller, which is why things like the handwriting gets small. You've got to think big. So if you're doing a button, you've got to think, push it right through that hole, you know, really yeah. make the movement as big as you possibly yeah. can because your brain is thinking that, it, that what you're doing is enough but sometimes right. it's just not enough and you have to make a bigger movement. And that's that's yeah. kind of a, a kind of idea to have in your brain when you're making movements, especially when you're trying to do something to a deadline and there's a little bit of anxiety creeps in. Yeah, you got to start early. You do. You absolutely <laughs> do. And adjust yourself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, again, thank you so much for sharing, Louise. Um, mm -hmm. We have Geraldine next. And then um, if we don't have any other questions, then uh, we'll be Hi. done for the day. But please, yeah. if you have any questions, raise your hand. Hi, Hi Alex. I just wanted to tell Louise that I mm -hmm. sent a direct message to her in the chat. I want her to be sure to read it. Um, okay. She hasn't seen it yet. So I hope Louise can hear me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, Geraldine. Okay. I'll lower my hand. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I thoroughly enjoyed it. You're welcome, <laughs> Geraldine. Thank you. Nice to talk to you, Miss Geraldine. Okay, I'm going to lower my hand now. All right. Thank you, Geraldine. Any last questions for uh, Jan, who did, again, such a wonderful job today talking about uh, PFNCA? Uh, Mr. Harold in the chat said this is uh, really good stuff. Great questions and answers. Thanks Alex, again for uh, sending that in the chat. Mm -hmm. Alex, I've gotten just a quick quick uh, comment. Um, one of the, one of the things that Jan showed was a was a, a um, 
picture of our community outreach truck, which was a retired fire command vehicle we've re repurposed for community outreach. And we actually launched that truck in 2019. And we did so at an, at an event that was organized by uh, council member Tran White in Washington, DC to raise awareness of Parkinson's. And if there are community events that you think that we should be represented at where we can share information that we may not know about, please reach out to us and let us know that you think it would be good to have us doing outreach at some of these uh, events in, in, in the community, it would be helpful for us because we, we have a very small staff. Jen, Jen didn't say this, but we've got, <laughs> excuse me, three, oh, three of us on staff. Jen, there's my coughing that I was trying to avoid oh, doing. No. Coughing now, so, but so there's there three of coughing. us on staff. Three, we, three full, full time staff, I think. Yeah, that's what and so, but if there's, if, if you think that's helpful, if this was helpful to you, you think a similar presentation or us being out in the community with that truck, or just think we've also done events with DC Office on Aging. Uh, let us know of specific events that are coming up where we can then do some research and see if we can be included. So we would appreciate that. And I see there isn't one more question, Alex, if you wanna give that one to Jen or myself. Sure, thanks Thanks for that, um, Mr. Jared. I, I can definitely think of some things off the top of my head. So but thank you for sharing that. Um, we have Yvonne um, next up, and I think will be our last question for the day. So go ahead, Yvonne, uh, unmute. Okay. Oh, thank you, Alex. And thank you, Jan, for the uh, presentation. Um, I lost my youngest sister to um, ALS. And uh, it was a very difficult um, degenerative disease to diagnose. And I guess they gave her a, a test for Parkinson's as well. But finally, uh, Johns Hopkins uh, diagnosed her as having ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. And I would imagine that there are similarities with respect to uh, uh, those two diseases. Do you care to comment? And do you uh, partner with um, ALS? We did attend a support group when she was first diagnosed. And she only lived uh, two years with the um, disorder. I think that is the major difference, Yvonne, between Parkinson's disease and ALS. I have a neighbor actually at the moment who has ALS. I mean, uh, unfortunately, ALS is a very degenerative disease, which always, I think, will lead to fatality. Um, you know, and I'm sorry to hear that your sister died so 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 quickly with it. Um, yes. But so, I mean, it, it 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 people. I mean, like I think someone put up in the chat that Michael J. Fox is now 62 years old and he was diagnosed in his late 20s. Mm -hmm. you know, so you're talking about somebody that has had Parkinson's for 30 odd years, and and that is so. Um, uh you know representative really of the community is that people live for a long time with parkinson's as they don't tend to for als i mean whereas we um we absolutely support people with parkinson's and some of the exercise programs that we do might be suitable for people with als and we certainly wouldn't say you can't come and join our exercise program but we are not experts in als and our medical advisory board is not an expert expert in als it, it does tend to focus on parkinson's disease mm -hmm. particularly but you know we certainly have got people in our community with other conditions other than Parkinson's disease who are exercising with us. What we would always ask them to do if, um, before they register and join our wellness program is that they make sure they check with their doctor, whichever kind of physician they have as a specialist, uh, that it's okay to them to exercise with us before they start because we, we, know, we wouldn't want to be liable to uh, for making somebody do things that, that would not be suitable for them with the condition that they have. And as, say, as we're not experts in any way, and nor do we have the medical advisory support for diseases other than Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Helped. I'm very sorry to hear about your sister. So it's oh, really it's a devastating disease, ALS, just awful. Thank you. I know um, one of our famous singers here in the District of Columbia, um, Roberta Flack, has been diagnosed with ALS and she's no longer able to speak. No. So difficult with somebody with such a lovely voice. <laughs> okay. Yes. So um, I don't see any other 
questions. So um, again, thank you all for getting on to today's um, today's guest. And uh, let's um, thank Jan and Jared for hosting today. Do you, do either of you have any closing remarks before we end for today? Yeah, just thank you, thank you for the opportunity, Jan. Thank you for thank you for taking the lead as as my uh, my cold continues to flourish. Unfortunately. <laughs> No problem. I say I, I, I'm, I'm just wanting to be a resource for the community. And, you know, we hope that by talking to you and, you know, this the kind of the, the network that spreads out from you, any of your friends and relations that you think might be interested in finding out about how we can support them um, as they go through a dis diagnosis and, and, and living with Parkinson's. We are absolutely thrilled to do that. We just you know, we just need to be able to contact enough people that we can help them. I always feel that there are so many more people in our area still that that have Parkinson's that don't know we exist and don't know what we can do to help. Um, and it's so sad because I think what we do is absolutely fantastic for people with Parkinson's and their caregivers. I'm going to stop uh, sharing now. Thank you so much.